Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Have you ever built a game where you had level changing and you really wanted to do a fade in between them, some sort of a transition, something, maybe something like that? If so, um, this video should be perfect for you. I'm going to run through the steps required to make a simple fade and then uh, show you how you can kind of customize it and change it up just a little bit. It's, it's pretty easy to get going though, so uh, let's get started. Here, you see as I click, I've just set it up to load the next level, and I'm going from the level demo to demo two. Now the part that's doing the actual work of hiding the screen is this canvas with a screen wipe script on it, which you see has a variable for the wipe speed. In fact, I can turn that all the way down and make it nice and fast, or I can turn it up and make it super, super slow. Now this wipe speed is actually modifying this image's fill amount. You may have noticed that sliding up and down when I just clicked over here. Now, the cool thing about using the image with the uh, filled image type is that I can actually just pick between a couple different options here and have it all just work. In fact, let's turn up that speed so I can show them quite a bit faster. There we go, let's go half a second. So we can do that radial 180, we can do a radial 360. Uh, you could change the fill origin, make it start at the top. We can also change to, um, oh, not that one, a horizontal or a uh, vertical and again we can adjust the fill origin here so if you want to go up and to down or down and up or left to right right to left you can you can pick right there so let's take a look at how this is actually working now there are two important components here the first is this screen wipe and the second is my level manager so I'm gonna look at the level manager first just because it's basic it's not really integral to this this project or this sample, but we needed something that does level loading and tells the wiper when to run. So that's what this is going to do. Your your game or systems will probably have your own level management thing, so don't worry about making it match. You just need to realize and recognize the important hooks here. So the first thing you see is we have an array of level names, and if I go back into here, see I've got demo and demo two in there, and that just matches my two scene names. Now both of those scenes do need to be in your scenes to build to be able to load them, so make sure that they're actually added in. I should also add this UI scene as well. So the UI, oh, actually no, I don't want it. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the UI scene in there, that's right. So the UI scene, you may notice, is a separate scene. I have the demo one open, but I also have an additional scene called UI, and that's where this level manager and the uh, screen wipe are. This could be a UI scene, it could be some initial state scene that you have for your game where you keep things around. And notice when I hit play, both of these objects are gonna go into the um, don't destroy on load anyway. So we don't really need the UI, we just need these things loaded up and staying there. Okay, so let's jump back into the code. We're looking at the level manager. We had two level names, demo and demo2. We also have a reference to a screen wipe. Right now it's null, but in awake we find the screen wipe and just cache it there. We're going to be using it a lot. Um, another alternative would be to make the screen wipe a singleton. It seemed like a little extra complication for this demo though. Um, on line 11 you'll see we have a next level index. This is just for keeping track of which level we're going to load next. Initially it's going to be zero, so when we increment it it's going to load level one. That might not make sense, but just as I step through, you'll see it. Um, in the update method here, oh, well, actually, before I jump ahead, the line 15, this is that don't destroy on load call. We definitely need this, or we need something keeping this level manager around as we load new levels. Okay, now let's look into update. In update, I just checked to see if fire one was pressed. That's like a left click, a control, or space, or a button. I'm just using left click. And if it is, we kick off a coroutine called load next level. Uh, coroutines always return an enumerator so we have a private i enumerator load next level and the first thing you see in here is that next level index plus plus this is what I was saying about it loading the level one first so first well initially we're gonna be loading into level zero right in fact we could probably put that into the start here if we had a full system but I have level zero in my application already kinda loaded now What's going to happen is this will increment to 1, and we'll look here to see if it has gone past the number of levels that we have. If we have, we reset it back to 1. So imagine we get this to 2, and we only have 2 levels in our scene, then uh, this will be true, because 2 is greater than or equal to 2, and then we reset it back to 0. kind of resets that loop, so we can keep going through a bunch of levels. Uh, and again, this is for a demo in a real game. You'll manage how you do your level changing differently, I'm sure. And then I just get the level name, and we call screen wipe dot toggle wipe, and we pass in true. 
because we want to block the screen. You can see the variable name there is drop block screen. And then we wait until screen wipe is done. And we just do a while screen wipe is not done, we yield return null. So just gonna loop here until it's done. Now, kind of worth noting the casing on here. I don't like it, but I wanted to match the uh, async operation casing down here. Normally I'd make a public property um, and make it a uh, Pascal case. But we're sticking with it, just keep it consistent. So the next thing we do, once the screen has finished wiping, so this is like once the thing is all black or gone all the way across and it's black, then we kick off an async operation called uh, load scene async. So we just use scene manager load scene async, pass in the level name, and then again we wait until the operation here, this is the loading, is done. And then when it's done, we call screen wipe dot toggle wipe false. Cool. So let's get into the actual screen wiping part. That's the fun stuff. I'm gonna jump straight in there, F12 to go to definition on that, toggle wipe, and uh, let's scroll up real quick, take a quick look. The serialized fields we have, a wipe speed, now this is measured in seconds, so I've got 0.1 to 3 seconds as a range here, so we just get a slider and we end up with reasonable values, and so we don't go down to zero, because then we'll get a divide by zero error. Uh, we have a reference to an image that we're getting in children right here. We could also reference this with the serialized field and assign it, but it seems like we don't really need it. And then I have an enum for wipe mode. Um, this is not so much needed, but I just wanted to keep track of where the thing was and what it was doing. Realistically, I think that these are probably overkill for the sample here, but I left them in anyway. Um, then in awake, let's see, we get the image again, like I mentioned before, and call don't destroy on load, so this hangs around. Now let's look at toggle wipe. So toggle wipe has takes in a bool for true or false, whether or not we want to block the screen. And you notice the first thing we do is set is done to false. So this is when we call this, right after that we're checking is done and we're waiting on is done. So I want to make sure that's not set to true. So if it had already run once and got set to true, it's back to false. Now we check if a uh, block screen is true, we set the wipe mode to wiping to blocked. If it's false, we set it to wiping to not blocked. This is basically clearing. Now in update, I just do a little switch on the wipe mode. If it's in wiping to blocked, I call wipe to blocked. If it's in wiping to not blocked, I call wipe to not blocked. Really simple. Uh, for the other two, we don't do anything. If we're all the way wiped, either way, we don't really care. We don't need to do anything about it. We might care about it um, in other cases though. So having this information around, it can be useful for other situations. Maybe we want to wait until it's blocked and then do some other things and we just wanna know you know that the state is actually in that blocked state or the unblocked state. Okay, so wipe to blocked. Remember this is getting called every update. And what we do is update this wipe progress float by adding the time t multiplied by one divided by the wipe speed. What this is gonna do is make our wipe speed be in seconds instead of a multiplier. If we don't do it this way, then you know 0 0.5 will actually be slower than one and two would be um, twice as fast as one. And we really want it, I, at least I prefer it to be in seconds because then it's easy to understand. There's no math to do in your head. You know, if designers or somebody else are going in there and adjusting it, they just know like, hey, this is the number of seconds. Let's keep it simple. Um, once we update the wipe progress, by the way, if we go up here, wipe progress, just a private float, nothing special about it. So once we uh, increment it, we adjust the fill amount to be equal to the wipe progress. And then if the wipe progress is greater than or equal to one, so essentially if it's 100% wiped, we set is done to true and we change wipe mode to blocked. Now when wipe mode's blocked, remember it's gonna come into update and just not do anything. And again, we could read it for something else if we need to. Uh, the wipe to unblocked, very similar. We just go in the opposite direction. So we do minus equals instead of plus equals. Everything else is the same there. Uh, we had set the fill image just like we were doing before, or the fill amount on the image just like before. And then we check to see if the progress is less than or equal to zero, because remember we're going down. If it is, we set is done to true and go to not blocked. Uh, the only other thing I have in here are two little test methods with the context menu option, and that's so that I can right click and just watch it wipe back and forth. Um, to do that, you know, just go in, hit play, select the canvas with my screen wipe component, and right click and hit block or right click and hit clear. Just an easy way to test things if you don't want to load levels back and forth. 
Now, before I end this, there's one other thing I wanted to show you, which is that with the image, right now I'm just using a blank dot. Actually, I think I made it a 64 by 64 dot, but it could be a single pixel. Uh, we can also change this in and use a real image if we want. So if you have some kind of an image that you wanna show or some pattern, you can always just assign an image, a source image here, and just make sure that the color isn't solid black. I've just picked a random image that I found online, but you can see when I click it, now it loads into that little now loading screen and then it goes away just like that. So you could modify it and make it a little bit fancier than a solid black image if you want. Now if you're interested in this and you're watching this when it came out, I'm going to be covering a lot of similar functionality and hooking in systems like this in the Unity Mastery course that I'm teaching next week. So if you're interested and have the time available to really dig in uh, check out the course i'll link it below and uh either way thanks for watching i uh, hope this was helpful if you have questions always feel free to just drop them below or shoot me an email and uh of course don't forget to share this with your friends and like and subscribe and all that fun stuff all right thanks again